Okay. All right, Rich Edson, thank you very much. Well, at my right, you will see how your congressman voted for the bailout. It passed in the House by only 67 votes, and one of those who voted for it is Republican Congressman Thaddeus McCotter. He's a lifelong resident of Michigan. He's joined us many times here on the show, and he's joining us this morning to tell us about last night's vote. Good morning, Congressman. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So I'm assuming that you feel pretty good about what happened last night. How concerned are you about passage in the Senate? Well, we don't feel good, Alexis. As we've talked about, you have a restructuring plan that's in place and it's going to intensify even if the bridge loan is approved. So we understand that this is a bridge loan to a continuing process that's going to be very painful for the auto industry and for Southeast Michigan in particular. As for the Senate, I respect the difference of opinion we have. I understand that many senators feel burned by the Wall Street bailout, cannot do this vote in good conscience, which is, I understand that. We're just asking them to allow a vote and see if the majority prevails in the Senate. So what happens, Congressman, if you do not get, or if, uh, frankly, if the automakers do not get the necessary votes that they need in the Senate? I mean, I've heard about differences in language between both the House and the Senate and what they wanted in the bills in regards to emissions and fuel efficiency standards. Uh, but if they go to vote later today and it doesn't happen, what does that mean? Well, we'll cross that Rubicon, I suppose, or bridge when it happens. The reality is, in the House, we have had our vote. It's going over to the Senate. The Senate is going to do their due deliberations. There's going to be members that are interested in certain issues. And we just hope that throughout that process that there's an ultimate resolution of the issue. In my case, I hope it's favorable. You know, there are a lot of people who suggest, why give money to a Chrysler, a private company, when we, the American public, the taxpayers, are sort of going to be on the hook for something that we don't know a lot about. We don't know a lot about the internal workings of Cerberus Capital. Should there be more transparency? I think there always should be more transparency, and I think you're seeing that that is one of the few good results of the Wall Street issue is that with that vote you mentioned earlier, Alexis, in Congress, the oversight of the elected officials is starting to increase within all appropriations, especially in these issues, and I hope that that continues across the board. We in Detroit, the auto industry, when we came in front of Congress, understood that that was necessary. It was the due diligence of the Congress, and we hope that that is applied to other people as well. Congressman, a deadline of March 31st has been given if, in fact, this does pass and they do get the money. Do you believe in that three-month time frame that they can produce the kind of restructuring that is necessary to change the stigma that this auto manufacturing, at least the big three here, are dinosaurs and, and get caught up with the times and the legacy issues? Well, we just hope that people get caught up with the reality that we have been restructuring and that we know it will continue. If you think about it, Alexis, Ford is not part of this because Ford's restructuring plan actually has made them viable and they don't have the liquidity problem that others do. Ford is smaller than GM, but GM was on a similar path. What I would hope that the Senate would understand is not just that, but if you look at this bill as drafted, we can all find problems with it, but in many ways the senators that are complaining the loudest about it have won. You have a restru accelerated restructuring process put in place in this statute that calls back the loans if the federal government does not feel the taxpayers are protected and then can take action to restructure that industry. This should be just about everything that they could reasonably expect. Okay. Congressman McCotter, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, not everyone is on board with the bailout. Our next guest is staunchly against the plan and says if this is about jobs, he has a three-part proposal to spur job creation and capital investment in his home state.